Tears for Fears were always more ambitious than the average synth-pop group. From the beginning, the duo of Roland Orzabal and Kurt Smith were tackling significant subjects. Their very name derived from Arthur Janov's primal scream therapy, and his theories were evident throughout their debut album, The Hurting. Driven by catchy, infectious synth-pop, The Hurting became a big hit in their native England, setting the stage for international stardom with their second album, 1985's Songs from the Big Chair. On the strength of the singles, Everybody Wants to Rule the World and Shout, the record became a major hit, establishing the duo as one of the leading acts of the second generation of MTV stars. Instead of quickly recording a follow-up, Tears for Fears labored over their third album, the psychedelic and jazz rock tinged The Seeds of Love. Smith left the group in the early 90s, while Orzabal continued with Tears for Fears as a solo project for several years, issuing a pair of albums. They reunited briefly for the 2004 album Everybody Loves a Happy Ending and permanently to tour and record 2022's The Tipping Point. Orzabal and Smith met as children in Bath, England. Both boys came from broken homes and Smith was leaning toward juvenile delinquency. Orzabal, however, turned towards books, eventually discovering Arthur Janov's primal scream therapy, a way of confronting childhood fears that John Lennon embraced after the Beatles disbanded. Orzabal turned Smith onto Janov, but before the duo explored this theory further, they formed the Scar Revival Band, Graduate, in the late 70s. After releasing a handful of singles, including Elvis Should Play Scar, Graduate dissolved in the early 80s, and the duo went on to form Tears for Fears, a synth-pop outfit directly inspired by Janov's writings. Riding in on the tail end of New Wave and New Romantic, Tears for Fears, which featured musical contributions from former graduate keyboardist Ian Stanley on early albums, landed a record contract with Polygram in 1982. The following year, the band released its debut, The Hurting, which became a major hit in Britain, generating no fewer than three top five hit singles. Two years later, the group released Songs from the Big Chair, which demonstrated a more streamlined and soul-influenced sound. Songs from the Big Chair became a huge hit in America, rocketing to the top of the charts on the strength of the singles Everybody Wants to Rule the World and Shout, which both hit number one, and the number three Head Over Heels, which were all supported by clever, stylish videos that received heavy MTV airplay. Instead of quickly following Songs from the Big Chair with a new release, Tears for Fears labored over their new record, eventually delivering the album The Seeds of Love in 1989. Featuring soulful vocals from Oletta Adams, who dominated the hit woman in chains, the album became a hit, reaching number eight, while the Beatles-inspired single Sowing the Seeds of Love reached number two in America. After The Seeds of Love, Tears for Fears spent several years working on the follow-up, during which time they released the collection Tears Roll Down, Greatest Hits, 82 to 92. Smith and Orzabal began to quarrel heavily, and Smith left the group in 1992, making Tears for Fears' 1993 comeback album, Elemental, essentially a solo record from Orzabal. On the strength of the adult contemporary hit, Break It Down Again, Elemental became a modest hit, reaching gold status in the US yet was hardly up to the group's previous levels. Smith, meanwhile, released a solo album in 1993, Soul on Board, which went ignored. Orzabal returned with another Tears for Fears album, Raul and the Kings of Spain, in 1995, which failed to make much of an impact. In late 1996, they released a rarities collection. In 2004, Orzabal reunited with Smith for the colorful Everybody Loves a Happy Ending, their first collaboration in over a decade. 
It wouldn't be until 2013 that newly recorded material would surface, although the duo had been active on the live circuit with dates in the US, Australia, and New Zealand. A three-track EP, released especially for Record Store Day, appeared that year. Used as a springboard for writing and recording new music, Tears for Fears inked a deal with Warner Records the following year and continued to work on their seventh album. During this time, Orzabal spent time caring for his wife, who passed away in 2017. Her death profoundly influenced his songwriting. After a few false starts, mainly due to additional songwriters being brought in, Smith and Orzabal sat down together to write in a manner inspired by the world around them, resulting in songs that poignantly dealt with everything from the climate crisis to political upheaval. They spent a summer touring, and in 2021, they entered the studio and completed the tipping point for Kraft Records. It arrived in February 2022 as their first full-length studio recording of original material in 18 years and marked their return to touring. Since the release of The Tipping Point in 2022, Tears for Fears have been riding a wave of renewed success. The album was met with critical acclaim, praised for its poignant lyrics and timeless sound, reminding fans why they fell in love with the band in the first place. Embarking on a global tour to promote the album, Roland Orzabal and Kurt Smith delighted audiences with electrifying performances, showcasing their enduring talent and stage presence. As the world moved forward, Tears for Fears continued to evolve, staying true to their roots while embracing the contemporary music landscape. Beyond music, Orzabal and Smith have become advocates for mental health awareness, drawing from their own experiences and the therapeutic journey that inspired their early work. They have used their platform to destigmatize discussions around mental wellness, encouraging others to seek help and support. Looking ahead to the future, Tears for Fears remain a beacon of creativity and resilience in the music industry. With their passion undiminished and their bond stronger than ever, they continue to inspire generations old and new, proving that their music is timeless and their influence enduring. As they stride confidently into the present day, their legacy is secure and the journey of Tears for Fears is far from over.